evening. I'm Nastasha and today I'll be talking on the case of shrimp turtle case. So in this case, uh, the United, United States bases its defense on the exception found in Article 20 of GATT. Section 609A calls for the ultimate negotiation of a bilateral and multilateral agreements for the protection and conservation of sea turtles. The U.S. claims that uh, its measures are necessary because first, all species of sea turtles are threatened with extinction and second, without the usage of TED, which is total excluded device, other measures to protect sea turtles are not sufficient to allow sea turtles to recover from the brink of extinction. It further argues that sea turtles are an exhaustible natural resources and section 609 clearly involves measures related to the conservation of sea turtles as accidental drowning in shrimp trawl nets accounts for the greatest number for human induced sea turtle deaths. According to the United States, section 609 also meets the requirement of the preamble of article 20 of GATT. It measures are not an arbitrary discrimination because section 609 is applied in a manner that carefully ties the criteria for certification to the particular condition of each country as international consensus regarding sea turtle exporting shrimp to the United States. Nor it is a disguised restriction on trade because there is an international consensus uh, regarding sea turtle conservation and mandatory use of TEDs, which belies any claim that U.S. measures are a disguised restriction on trade. So that is my opinion for the case. Thank you. Hello. I personally agree with the action taken by the United States on the ground that when the United States argued that under Article 20, Clause G, it could enact a ban to protect sea turtles because such creatures were considered an exhaustible natural resources. The sea turtle is clearly an exhaustible resource given their inclusion in Chapter 1 of Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species as a species threatened with extinction. Thus, an application of Article 20 clause G would be appropriate. In addition, the United States alleged that Section 609 of Endangered Species Act in 1989 fell under the exception of Article 20 clause G. Article 20 clause G requires that any unilateral trade embargo must be designed for the conversation of an exhaustible resource and that measures which should be made in conjunction with restrictions on domestic production or consumption. Alternatively, the United States argued that the Section 609 fell under the exception in, provided in Article 20, Clause B, which stated that measures could be taken unilaterally to protect animal life, which is necessary. United States contended that the use of the total excluded device, TED, was an effective method of protecting their, this resource, and therefore any measure fairly and equally to encourage other nations to utilize this method was justifiable under Article 20, Clause G. In conclusion, the method taken by the United States is justifiable in order to protect the turtle which is near to the extinction. Thank you. <laughs> On the question of jurisdiction, the US considers sea turtles as a shared global resources which does not fall exclusively within the complaints respective jurisdiction. It submits that the Article 20 unambiguously covers all animals and natural resources without any limitation as to their location and that the Montreal Protocol provides a good example of nations seeking to protect life and health of humans, animals and plants without regard to their location. And in its report, the appellate body made clear that under WTO rules, Countries have the right to take trade action to protect the environment, in particular human, animal or plant life and health, and endangered species and exhaustible resources. The WTO does not have to allow them to distract. 
and it also said measures to protect sea turtles will be legitimate under GATT Article 20, which deals with the various exceptions to the WTO's trade rules, provided certain criteria such as non-discrimination were met. So, in conclusion, I personally agree with the action taken by the United States due to the fact that the United States, they not only want to protect the environment, but uh, at the same time, they want to protect their domestic market. And I believe that from the perspective of the United States, they did not mind where is the location of the turtles, but as long as we can protect the turtles, uh, or in general the environment, so it should be fine for them to impose the law to the other to the another country. The shrimp turtle case was decided in favor of the United States because although there is a clear violation of Article Eleven of the General Agreements to Tariffs and Trade, which I will hereafter mention it as GATT, it is uh, still justified under Article Twenty of GATT, which forms the exceptions. Well, I do agree that uh, there is a positive effort by the United States to conserve exhaustible natural resources. I cannot see eye to eye on the decision of the appellate body to hold that the prohibition banned by the United States is justified under Article 20. It was held that there is no discrimination by the United States as long as there is comparable efforts made in concluding agreements with other groups of countries. And I would say that this threshold to be met is a very, very low one. Uh, the requirement is too easy. And by imposing such method, it undermines the role of the chapeau of Article 20 in limiting the applicability of the exceptions. And furthermore, countries with great political power, uh, for example, the United States, will be able to impose uh, any discriminatory, prohibitory ban and by using their political and economic, economical power to suppress many other countries, especially uh, the trading nations, because trading nations such as Malaysia will be in dire need to trade with countries with a uh, larger market and buying power and those countries will have to succumb to such immense power, putting them in a very disadvantageous position because they'll be worried of any trade embargo imposed by the other nations. I couldn't agree with the decision by the appellant body as I think that as the year passed by, the environmental issue should be considered. However, if we consider the environment issue um, according to GATT, it should also include the 20 and economic issue as well and not just a purely environmental issues only and um, according to principle 12 of Rio declarations it was saying that unilateral actions to deal with the to deal with the environmental challenge outside the jurisdictions of the um, importing, importing country should be avoided. And the Director General Remy recently stated that unilateral action could not solve the problem of climate change and competitiveness of the industry. Uh, however, the appellant body held that the measure as modified by the United States um, is allowed as long as serious good faith uh, effort was being made to arrive um, multilateral agreements and as long as it's required uh, exported to put in a place um, uh, to a place a program that will be comparable in effectiveness to the American programs allow allowing the latitudes of to the exported to adopt a program suit to their circumstances and the measure was helped well only because now have a component of international negotiations and took into account the needs of the complainants. The unilateral means was legal so long as the United States applied it 
by multilateral means and this seems a bit self contradictory and it seemed to me that it's a type of false multilateral relation. That's all, thank you. I could not agree with the decisions of a period body in the admissions of the unsolicited amicus curious information from NGOs as it constitutes an intervention to the functioning of the panels, which is in violation of the Article 13 in the of the dispute statement understanding. The panels the panels in the first US stream case already agree that they 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 agree that to accept the information from the NGO provided that it be solicited. However, the appeal body, they struck down the panel stand on the ground that the Article 13, the power to seek information, does not, does not prohibit the panels to accept unsolicited information. It is important to note that until, under Article 13, only the panels have the rights to seek information. A period body could not intervene in the functioning of the panels if the panels choose to exercise their rights in the WTO compliant way. Furthermore, the, the, appeal, the, furthermore, the appeal body consider the NGO submissions to be a part of the submission of the United States. United States possesses enormous legal resources to argue before the appeal body, and now the opportunity to retain the useful NGO arguments uh, which added to its strength. On the other hand, NGO of the developing countries lack resources to participate in this kind of dispute settlement process. But those um, NGO present were from the developed country on this, which they may not understand well the problem of developing state. As such, the appeal body have neglected the, have neglected the principle of non-discrimination in accepting unsolicited information from NGO who in favor of environmental protections in the absence of NGO in favor of market access for the export of the developing countries as in the present case. Mm, that's my opinion on Amicus Curious.